product rule is one of the most useful tools for differentiating functions multiplied by other functions where the derivative can be found by the derivatives of the individual functions. And this opens up a whole host of possibilities for differentiation. Now, in this video, we will go through the rule and apply it to different examples. We will also formulate the quotient rule, which helps us find the derivative of the division of functions. And finally, we will prove the product rule. So firstly, the rule. Say you had y is equal to some function multiplied by another function. Then the product rule states that dy dx is equal to the derivative of the first function multiplied by the second function plus the first function multiplied by the derivative of the second function. And we have f and g written here because f of x can be shortened to f and g of x can be shortened to g. Now, the best way to get a grasp of this rule is through examples. Take y is equal to x times sine x. Then dy dx is equal to the derivative of the first function times the second function plus the first function times the derivative of the second function. Now we know that the derivative of x is one and the derivative of sine x is cosine of x. This gives that dy dx is equal to sine x plus x cosine x. Now let's take another example, y equal to x squared times e to the x. Then again, dy dx is equal to the derivative of the first function multiplied by the second plus the first function multiplied by the derivative of the second function. Now we know that the derivative of x squared is 2x and the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. This gives that dy dx is equal to 2x e to the x plus x squared e to the x. Now remember that if y equals f of x times g of x, then we have the product rule which states that dy dx is equal to this. But a better, more memorable way of writing it is to use Lagrange's notation where we write f g dash is equal to f dash g plus f g dash, where f dash is equal to df by dx and f g all dash is the derivative of f times g. And this makes it very easy to remember the product rule as all you have to do is write f g twice with a plus in between and put a dash on each function. Now this is brilliant, but what if we had three functions multiplied together? What would be the derivative of that? Or what about the derivative of n functions multiplied together? What we need is the extended product rule. Now suppose we want to find the derivative of three functions multiplied together, which can be written as f g h all dashed. Then the extended product rule states that this is equal to the derivative of the first function multiplied by the other two, plus the derivative of the second function multiplied by the other two, plus the derivative of the third function multiplied by the other two. And in fact, we can continue this pattern for n functions multiplied together. Just take the derivative of one and multiply it by the rest and do this for each function and add them all up together. So for example, take y equal to x cubed times e to the x times cosine of x. Then dy dx is equal to the derivative of the first function multiplied by the other two, plus the derivative of the second function multiplied by the other two, plus the derivative of the third function multiplied by the other two. Now the derivative of x cubed is just 3x squared and the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. And finally, the derivative of cosine x is minus sine x. And this finally gives us what dy dx is. Now the next natural question to ask is can we find the derivative of a function divided by another function? And to do this, we need something known as the quotient rule. And quotient is just another way of saying something divided by something else. Now, when formulating the quotient rule, we require something known as the chain rule, which will be covered in a separate video. But what it essentially states is that the derivative of one over g of x is minus the derivative of g over g squared. 
Now let's put this up here for future reference and let's say we have y equal to some function divided by another function and this is equivalent to writing f times 1 over g. Then by the product rule dy dx is equal to the derivative of the first function times the second plus the first function times the derivative of the second. Now we know from before that the derivative of 1 over g is minus the derivative of g over g squared. And let's take the minus out and let's multiply top and bottom by g for the left quotient to form a common denominator. Everything gives f dash g minus fg dash all over g squared. And this is the quotient rule. One of the most famous examples to utilize this rule is finding the derivative of tangent of x. Now we know we can write tan x as sine x divided by cosine x and then by the quotient rule dy dx is equal to the derivative of the first function times the second function minus the first function times the derivative of the second function divided by the second function squared. Now we know that that the derivative of sine is cos and the derivative of cosine is minus sine. Now we have that cosine times cosine is cosine squared and sine x times sine x is equal to sine squared. Now in the numerator we have the famous identity cosine squared x plus sine squared x which is equal to to one. This gives that dy dx is equal to one over cosine squared of x, which is also written as secant squared of x. Now for more questions and solutions, check out the problem sheet in the description below. And now you're probably rolling around thinking all about the amazing applications that the product rule can bring, but where's the proof? Well, finally, here it is. The proof of the product rule. Now remember from before that dy dx is equal to the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. Let's now take y equal to f of x times g of x. Then dy dx is equal to the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h times g of x plus h minus f of x times g of x all divided by h. Let's now focus on the limit and we're going to use a very classical trick where we minus f of x times g of x plus h and add f of x times g of x plus h. And we can do this as these two would cancel and would be equivalent to adding zero. Let's now split the fraction into two and we factorize g of x plus h on the left and factorize f of x on the right. Let's now see what the limit gives us for each term. Now the first term is our definition for the derivative of f of x. And the limit as h approaches zero of g of x plus h is just g of x or g. f of x is just f and the limit as h approaches zero of the rightmost bracket is the derivative of g, which gives our famous product rule. Now, if you guys learned anything, hit that like button. If you haven't already, subscribe and head over to mathesy.com for problem sheets, notes, and more of my videos.